Hello, everyone. I'm Lee Blickley from HuffPost. Welcome to Build. And today we have a One Tree Hill reunion on the show as we are joined by Hillary Burton and Tyler Hilton, who have paired up for a Christmas witch, wish, which is on Lifetime, a holiday movie full of all kinds of love and cheer. Uh, let's take a look at a clip. Anyone special? Uh, no. A wish box. Let's do it. The cast of One Tree Hill. Are we ready to do this? Reunite for a magical reunion. One, two, three, Frank. I wish to have a true love's kiss. Hillary Burton and Tyler Hilton. Are you going to make a wish? With special guest Pam Greer. You've always been my wish, Faith. A Christmas wish. Hey guys, welcome Hillary Burton and Tyler Hilton. Yeah. What's up? Thank you. You know, of course, I was like a Christmas witch, which which I mean, be? well, we keep talking. We're like, that's gonna be the next Christmas movie, maybe. Yeah, somewhere. Daniel between. Ackles and I for ten years have been like, we have to do Christmas witches. Like, it's a pagan holiday, you guys. I, think I we love it. So yeah, it was a Freudian slip. I could tell Hillary was like, what, what, what? <laughs> witch? Christmas witch? She, she read my mind. Yeah. yeah, that's next year's Christmas movie. So yeah, last year was the first One Tree Hill Christmas reunion with a Christmas contract. Yeah, Tyler and I had done one six years ago called Christmas six. on the Bayou, oh, and um, I remember that one. Yeah, that's and, a good one. I remember that one. The uh, old Christmas oh, classic. Back in the day. Hey, that's it. it was. And it rated so well, and people kept requesting it, and people just loved it. And so, uh, our producer Daniel Lewis called me um, two years ago now, and was like, "Hey, let's do another one. Do you want to invite some more friends?" And so Tyler was there. Rob Buckley was there, um, Elizabeth Arnois was there, Danielle Ackles was there, Antoine Tanner was there. We had the best time. And then this year we decided, you know what would be even better? Let's have 32 actors in 22 locations and we'll shoot it in 15 days. And it was a mountain, but we climbed it. Yeah, yeah. it was a cute one. It was a cute yeah, one. Yeah, it was a cute one. It really is. I was telling them, like, when I first read the script, too, because I would I would have done whatever. Like, it's just so fun working with them. I'd be like, oh, whatever. I read the script and I was like... <laughs> Am I tearing up? And like, did I like really laugh for a second? I, I texted my wife who's in it too. I was like, this script is amazing. Like, I can't wait to do this. It really is good. I did tear up. I mean, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good Christmas movie. Me too, me too. But when you combine my One Tree Hill fandom obsession with Christmas, I mean, I'm all in. I think that's why you guys rate pretty well. Yeah, we have really great fans. And, even, you know, we were talking earlier, when we were on the show, we kept being told every year, like, oh, your show's being canceled. Like, you guys, no one watches yeah, like, you. Oh, I guess nobody watches. There okay, was no okay, social media. Sense. And so we're like, yeah, okay, all right, great. All of a sudden, when social media hit and we found out that people did watch that show, we were like, oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, that's why sure. are they going to cancel it? So it's so <laughs> nice to kind of revisit it and be like, hey, thanks, nice to see you guys this go around, you know? Yeah, because so. now, too, One Tree Hill's on Netflix and on other streets. Yeah, it's on Hulu now. Platforms. Yeah, it it's goes back and forth. Yeah. It's very contentious. No, but I, and I'm on, I was telling Hillary, too, like I'm on tour all the time, and so I, I feel like I get to see the fans, and it's like that Matthew McConaughey line. Like, I literally keep getting older, and <laughs> all these One Tree Hill fans stay the same age. Like, there's college kids that are like, oh, my God, Gosh, I watch you. I watch the show on Hulu all the time. I like, can't believe it. A show like that. Well, now that we're older, I love running into like college chicks in the supermarket. They're like, "Has anyone ever told you you look like an older Hillary Burton?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's it." Yeah. Listen. <laughs> but is it weird now since it's on those streaming platforms to now see how Twitter would have been if it was? Oh, thank oh, God. God! Thank God! Oh, God. Thank God. God! We Very got nice. we we got away with so much. I feel like because we were we were also so free. I feel like because we just did whatever. We didn't care if I don't know. There was just what are people gonna do T with their digital cameras? Take a picture, go develop it. I don't know. You know, like <laughs> I used the digital. I didn't have like a cell phone until I was sixteen. Like college for me was my digital camera. Now we'd imagine, have to be like, though. you know, they'd be like, oh, can you live tweet this? Can you do? I, I don't know. It'd just be like crazy. And I'm horrible with technology. I, if you don't mind me saying, I feel like Hillary's even worse than I am. <laughs> so it would have been, you know, tough for us. Yeah, but it's cool. It's is it cool now though, where you can be on Instagram and share. Things with your fans. I know, like, you just got married, which congratulations. I did. That deserves yeah. an awesome Thanks. round of applause. It looked like a fun time. It was a pretty good time. You had, like, a tattoo artist at your wedding? Oh, like, yeah. how cool. Are you serious? Yeah, bud. Oh, Tyler, you weren't there? Ooh. Ooh. I didn't no, get invited. That's not <laughs> true. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, I was going to sing. I was invited. I was going to be a whole part of the ceremony in the last minute. Like, we couldn't come. My wife and I we were so bummed, but. Well, he missed the party of the century. Yeah, um, it's fine. We'll just make another Christmas movie about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I. We probably would have got a tattoo also, because oh, Megan and I keep being like, should we get matching tattoos? And yeah. that would have been the moment, I feel like. We're all going to get Christmas tree tattoos together. Let's do it. Okay. If we do one more movie yeah. together, we should do it. <laughs> Gotta do it. Oh. Um, no, for us, 
so the whole reason we like doing these movies together is because the process is just as important as the product. You know, it's, we have a no jerk policy. Everybody that we bring into the fold is like great and so fun to work with and the, the work days are easy and everyone's really good at their job. And so to be able to share that process with everyone, it just makes the, the premiere of the product so much more fun for everybody. The anticipation's much more exciting. Yeah. And Tyler, how is it working with Hillary outside of that, you know, one tree hill bubble? Is it is it fun to kind of be able to play Hillary, maybe love interest? I have friend? Uh, I have rarely acted with somebody other than Hillary in my life, <laughs> to be honest with you. I've worked with her in like five projects in my Hold life. On. She was the first person I acted with on One Tree Hill. Thank God that she'd worked on TRL for so long because I had hardly acted. I was in Walk the Line for a second as Elvis, and then and then I went right to One Tree Hill, and I didn't know what I was doing, and she was like, come here, come here, I'll show you how to go. This is a mark. These are the lights, you know? And then after that, we did um, Extant together, which was a show on CBS I did with her and her husband. Isn't and then The Halle Berry show. Yeah. yeah. And then we did, like, three Christmas movies together, so... I'm just. You I'm, just need her. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. We're gonna get the same agent. And I'm gonna be like, whatever she's in, I'm in. That's we're, it. Are we each other's like baby blanket? I think like, so. I yeah. Movie. I'm like, wait, can Hillary be in it though? Oh, <laughs> sweet. And is it weird for you too? Because you seem very close. You're good friends. Is it weird to play uh, love interests in a movie? Honestly, I love that your eyebrows would be like. Yeah. Is it weird to play Ooh. love interests? Well, it's no, but well, it's, it's weird. a spoiler. <laughs> no, kind of a spoiler. Yeah. No, no. For it's sure. weirder to do it with someone you don't know, because then you're like, is this person's gonna be a creep? Like. Oh. I love Tyler's wife probably more than I love him. That's true. Um, and she's my kissy, lovey, huggy baby. So I think that... Mine too. Mine yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> she's mine. Kissy she's hug. mine. She's mine. So yeah, doing it with someone that you don't know was super weird. It, I prefer being like, yo, bro, you down to kiss? Yeah. Cool. Let's kiss it out, bro. Yo, bring Holiday. my wife in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So yes, your wife is in this. No, but uh, but Hillary and Megan were actually going to do this movie first. They were looking for a movie where they could play sisters or just kind of you know hang out with each other on screen. And they're like, well, we need a love interest. And Hillary was like, asked Megan, she's like, hey, how do you feel if Tyler's yeah, in weird? this too? But he plays my husband. She's like, oh my god, are you kidding? That'd be so fun to all do this together. So. I love it. And is it cool to work with your wife uh, on set in like a you know a working? Very environment? tough. Yeah. No, no, it was actually it was actually great. I mean, the diva. Yeah. No, it was so great. It was we worked together on a movie called Charlie Bartlett where we met and we haven't worked together since then. So it was just wild. Like, you know, like, you know, at night, like learning lines for the next day together, like sharing a trailer together. It's just all these things that you, you normally were on set, you know, uh, just individually and to like get to share it all together was wild. I kept saying over and over, I was like, I have to appreciate every day of this because this is the most fun project I've ever been a part of. And I knew it, like it'll, unless we do another one, which I will hope and pray that we get to do. Yeah, watch the heck out of it so we can do a sequel. Like yeah. I just Christmas knew that witch. was going to be special. Yeah, Christmas witch. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys shot this in Louisiana. So you went back down, not to the bayou, but close by. Babe, I love that humid Christmas weather. Guys, uh, we filmed this movie in May in Louisiana, just FYI. Yeah. Just want you to so know. So when you see us not sweating, it's because we're super professional. Yeah. Usually they blot you with like a pad. They'd like sponges. They were sponging <laughs> our face with. Just, <laughs> yeah. Is it fun, though, to kind of go on a location um, and experience a different part of the country and get to shoot a movie, like you said, and have a great time? It's summer camp. Yeah. We've, I mean, we've been totally. saying for years. It's the camp vibe. We are all in our little extended stay hotel together. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. did you get plastic cups at the Target? Great, great. I've yeah. got the rosé. Come I'm like, on. Hey, guys, I'm at Walmart. Does anybody need anything? <laughs> all right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's a clubhouse. But the, also the town down there was so cute. Ponchatoula, Louisiana. Shout out to Ponchatoula. Hey, now. Uh, I, when I was watching it, I was like, is this a real place? It is, and it they're so cute. great. It's like and they the were, strawberry capital of the world or something. It is, a actually. a huge berry festival. There's like strawberries all over the movie. I know everyone was, was wondering where that was. It's in Ponchatoula, actually. The strawberry capital of the world. Um, but yeah, like they, uh, they, they decorated the whole town for Christmas for us. Even though it was May, they got so into it. It was really cute. It was really cute. And did people kind of flock out? Like, I imagine when you guys ever go back to Wil Wilmington, people come out in droves. Did people find you in Louisiana? You know what was cool is um, people were very respectful yeah. there, respectful of the process, but we were shooting in, like, the town park where the big Christmas tree is, and there was an elderly gentleman that had lived there for decades, and he came out and he looked at everything our art department had put up, and he was so earnest, and he was like this is what it should always look like. And so then I guess the town has rallied and they're like decorating it like that from really? now. Yeah. 
Yeah, it oh. inspired the town, and Ponchatula. it's fun when like art and Ponchatula. life get all get all mixed up. They did a screening of the movie down there in the they park. Did? Yeah, they had like a big, huge like movie screen set up in the park. Wow. It's just like wow. Wow, had no this idea. is Go great. Back. <laughs> this stuff was happening. Yeah. Um, I know, and you mentioned like the art department, which a lot of this movie too is super sweet because you're an art teacher, yeah. and part of the movie is that the arts funding is being jeopardized. Um, was that an important storyline to play? It really because, was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the last two years, so I found out two years ago that my high school football team, we'd gone to states when I was in high school. We were like varsity blues. And I found out that they couldn't field a varsity football team. And then I started to dig more in, and I found out my, my old high school is a Title I high school, Parkview High School in Sterling, Virginia. It's in the wealthiest county in the United States. And so every other high school has all these, like, parent-teacher groups that raise a bunch of money and booster clubs. And my high school, because it's Title I, has to compete with all those kids, but they've got nothing. And so we've created a program to raise money for them because extracurriculars matter. They matter more than the classroom sometimes because you're learning how to do public speaking. You're learning how to express yourself. You're learning how to connect with other people. And everything that I do in my career, whether it's producing, that those are skills I learned in student government, you know, art department stuff, writing, um, obviously theater, all of those things stem from what I was doing after school. So doing this movie while I'm working in tandem with my high school was very timely. And I hope more people go back to their high schools or their middle schools and say like, oh, hey, I'm an adult now. How can I help? Yeah. And what, even thinking back on that, like Tyler, someone like you, I'm sure, thrived in like the arts department or... Man, I was so lucky. I went to so many different schools. I went to a different school every year from pretty much kindergarten until ninth grade. And then I went to three different schools in ninth grade. I was at a different school every year. It was so tough. And then once I was settled in my school, uh, La Quinta High School in ninth grade, I was there through the rest of high school. So it really mattered to me. And luckily, it was a performing arts magnet with with an incredible theater department that was just like award winning. I ended up getting to go here to New York City for this these acting championship finals. All this Were really you great an acting champion? I was an acting champion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you win at acting, but that was actually Ooh. how I ended up getting my agent and stuff was like it was just all this it, huge opportunities for me. They had a musical theater department, a class you could take. I mean, things where at some of the other schools I was at never would have been offered to me. I mean, and it became such a launching pad for me. I mean, it was like Allison Lohman was part of that um, scene, um, oh, cool. Aubrey O'Day. You know, like, all these r random people, like, were just, it was a real arts community, so I got, you know, a real leg up from that, you know, so. It were was you always important. a singer, or were you an actor first? Who knew? I was always a singer. My family are all musicians, so I was just, like, singing from a young age, playing guitar in coffee houses, like, as young as I could. But I didn't do acting until they needed a Danny for their grease in, in oh high school, God, yeah. and none of the other seniors could sing, <laughs> so they were like, well, let's just... Uh, you know, open it up to the freshmen, and I had like tons of acne and like Aww. and like braces and rubber bands in my teeth and all. And I was like, I can sing. <laughs> and they were like, Well, let's try them out. And then I got the lead, and from there, I was like, I was all good in the theater department. So it was just totally random. Yeah, and it changes your confidence, I'm sure, because you know, from a yeah. kid with braces, now you're like Danny Zuko. You're hey, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got braces and acne, but now I've got you know You're makeup so pretty on. Pretty now. <laughs> <laughs> And how about you, Hillary? What did like being in the arts department for you? Uh, did it help your career at all? If yeah, being in high for school? sure. I mean, I started doing theater really young. I started doing the plays at the high school when I was in third grade. They were doing The Sound of Music, and they needed little kids to play. So I played Gretel. Mm -hmm. And then in fifth grade, they did The Music Man, and I played Amaryllis. And so I was used to being around older people. Where I was, I was pretty ostracized by my peers, but these older people saw value in me, and they were like, "Honey, you're you're great." So that was a when you're an awkward child, someone older than you or, or more established than you telling you they believe in you is a really valuable thing. So the arts really saved me as a, as a person. Um, and then I got an agent when I was in seventh and eighth grade, and I saw her headshot recently, you guys. Ooh. It is cute. There is a oh lot of JC Penny leaning. Mm. You nailed the arm shot. At a young age. Yes. Really yeah. Uh, and then I picked a college here in New York to go to because I, you know, you have to go where the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. People who become actors can't be anything else. There's nothing else that you can be. Um, because otherwise, you should go be that other thing. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a rough 
life full of rejection. And so if you can do something else, like, great, you should yeah, do that. Yeah, go do that, really, truthfully. <laughs> it's like an addiction that if you can help not being addicted to, it probably is better. <laughs> but if there's nothing else you can do, join the circus. Yeah. <laughs> but you were a VJ for a while on TRL. Do you remember those days? It was the best. Oof. Back when there was music on television. Did you enjoy that? Was that like a part that it was... That was a great way to learn the business because people come in and like, oh, you become an actor and you go to set and people bring you coffee and they coddle you and they brush your hair. Working at MTV, it was like, baby, you got to write your own cue cards, do your own hair, you know, like get yourself together, be a professional. Dude, I feel at the way about being a musician. Old. I'm like, yeah. actors have it so much easier than they have any idea. Because if you do anything else, like either VJ work oh, or yeah. hosting, or being, you're like, no one's doing anything for you. In the world of acting, it's great. No, they'd put you on a plane and they'd be like, you're covering in sync in the middle of nowhere and don't make a jerk of yourself. Yeah. Okay. What are their names again? Yeah. <laughs> but so you learn, you know, you learn all about the sales mm -hmm. in, in film and in music and stuff. And you learn about how not to be a jerk. You know, when you're an interviewer, you want to sell somebody's product that's, like, nice. Yeah. And there are so many people that would come through and just be like, yeah. are we nice? How are we doing? Yeah, yeah you, you guys are like really that? selling the we product. We like you so much. Oh, yeah. You're selling, like, Louisiana tourism, right? Yeah. Get down on the bayou. Strawberry capital of the world. <laughs> Ponchatoula, Louisiana. <laughs> Tyler, were you ever on TRL when Hillary was there? Yes. Uh, I can't re. I was on it a few times, and um, I think I was on once before One Tree Hill, and I, I might have barely known her, and she was just... Some Aloof. cool, intimidating girl that was on one, uh, TRL. But then I went on a bunch with the cast, and we had a blast. That's so fun. So how did you end up on One Tree Hill? It was crazy. They, my label was pushing my single, and they were looking for outlets for me to go on TV and kind of mm -hmm. sing. And I'd never heard of the show, and I wasn't really, like, a, a TV fan. I didn't really watch TV. I was always touring. So, like, you're going down to Wilmington, you're going to, like, be on this show, and they're going to write you a couple lines. So I was like, okay. So when I got down there, I was like, I've never seen the show. It, it was the first episode of season two. I was like, can you send me season one just so I know what this show's about? So they sent me season one. I was like, all right, I'm going to watch the first episode, see what happens. Two days later, I'd watched all of the episodes. I'd ordered all my food in, and I was like, <laughs> I'm obsessed with this show. But then I screwed myself because Monday morning when I went into work, it wasn't like Hillary Burton I was meeting. It was like Peyton Sawyer, yeah. you know? And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my God, that's Brooke. Like, I really screwed myself because I was like into the show at that moment, and now I was on the show. It was so bizarre, but it's cool. It's so cool, though. Um, and of course, you ran uh, tricks on the show, so you got to see a, a lot of musicians. It kind of brought your TRL life, yeah. like it combined it. But they, you know, One Tree Hill did a lot for music back then. You, you guys, pretty much would like make my mixtapes for me. Well, that's <laughs> nice. Good music on it. Yeah. CDs. Maybe. Yeah, it was a it was a music heavy show, which was great because as the person that was coming off of MTV, it really married my two worlds together. Mm -hmm. And even now, you know, like I'll run into people from from back in the day, and it's thrilling. It's just like, oh my god, remember when it was magical and like it was live, which was really exciting. You know, before there were all these internet platforms, before there was social media. Back in my day. Back in my day. TRL invented like tweeting oh, yeah. because we would have that live ticker at oh, yeah. the bottom where people could write in and it would, if you saw yourself live on TV, it was just like so exciting. We rushed home from school. Like, you got to be home for TRL. I think that's why a lot of musicians ended up on the show as well, because Hillary was kind of a conduit. I think she knew a lot of these bands, and mm -hmm. it just, it was a real, like, musical show. You know, it was crazy. I, after doing a couple episodes, I was like, I'm obsessed with everyone on the show. Yeah. They're all my favorite people in the world. Hillary was so nice. Thank God you were <laughs> my first friend there. But, like, I was like, anytime they want me back, we'll, um, I'll come back. And they just kept me writing me in. It was just crazy. And now look at you. You're on now a poster a with Hillary. Yeah. Oh, man. Hillary we keep Knight. saying we're just going to keep doing Christmas movies till we're like gray and I'm Mrs. Claus and Don't you're Santa. enough to be Santa. Yeah, That's amazing. Our... And then you keep bringing it. So, like, Lee Norris yeah. is in this, Antoine Tanner. Uh, who else? Colin uh, Fickus. Yeah. Oh, my Barbara God. It was Alan so Woods. good to see him. Wasn't it, though? Everyone Sweet. says that he's so good. He's, he's so great funny. in he's this. Fantastic. One and, of the I mean, people. and, you know, what we remember from One Tree Hill was such like a set. It was one of the, you know, most amazing episodes but a very sad moment so it's nice to see colin he's uh, literally the funniest human yeah. on the planet yeah. and a that lighter. was never utilized on one tree hill and so we were like oh we need someone to come in and be like the life of the party mm -hmm. to spice things up and he was just a no-brainer and we had so much fun with him that we're like buddy like please join our cult yeah stay in every chris the christmas wish <laughs> We Rich. have a Christmas cult now. Yeah, who else was it? So Antoine, Colin, Barbara, Ellen Woods. Yeah. God, 
It's a bunch of random people. Anyone else? Like, well, w- I also had uh, Willie Garson from my white collar days, mm-hmm. which, was which is like a nice little white collar reunion. But yeah. then you have Pam Greer, which is like, yeah. oh my hey. god, can we talk about Pam? Yeah, Greer? how did you convince her to yeah, be? Gotta, it's great. <sighs> this is when Hillary gets really <laughs> flustered here. She they made so much fun of me. She was so starstruck. I've never. She's met everyone. She was on TRO. Nobody's gonna intimidate Hillary. She was so starstruck by Pam Greer. She was like, "Guys, Pam's coming." I'm like, "Okay, there's nothing that we can do." Like, she's here, just like everyone. She's like, oh, "Pam's coming." Everyone, okay? Is everyone cool? Everyone have what they need? She was like, "No one act weird. Yeah. Be cool." Um, no, she was. So when when we got the script, our our producer Daniel sent me the script. Our director Emily was like fleshing it out, writing the script. And we knew that there was this one magical character that we needed, and we really needed somebody like very special to play it in order for it to work and make sense in the story. And we got a list of people that were submitted from agents, and we saw Pam's name, and there was just nobody else. I mean, there was nobody. Hey, can she do it? Can she do it? She was shooting a couple other different things, and she was the very first person signed on. And like we geeked out. Hard. She's like the magic of the movie. Oh. You know, I don't want to spoil it, but she's pretty magic. There's some great actors in this. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's um, that fact that she's involved is just like wild. And acting with her was amazing too. She's, she's really. Real. She was there for her birthday. We got to celebrate her birthday oh, yeah. with her, which That's is awesome. gonna be something I put in my. And you guys scrapbook. kind of remem- remind me of each other, actually. You. And she Pam. lives on a farm. Yep. Really? Yeah. Where does she live? Colorado, oh, cool. like a horse vibe. Yeah. You know, she's like a horse, you know, raises horses yeah. and has a big old piece of land. A lot like Hillary. You, I felt like you guys were very similar. She's my hero. Yeah, she's cool. <laughs> and, uh, that, that's a quick, nice segue into You're writing a book, right, about being yeah, living on a farm. Yeah, well, I wrote it already. Yeah. That's awesome. It comes out in April. It's called The Rural Diaries. And it's, um, you know, what's weird is I started doing these movies kind of as a joke. It was like, yeah, I'll do a Christmas movie. Ha ha. They weren't cool at the time. And I love things that aren't cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to do the dorkiest thing there is to do and make it cool. And so I loved the genre because um, the expectations were like, oh, this will be cheesy. And then when we made something like endearing and great and relatable, people got really excited about it. And all of a sudden my life my real life started mirroring all these stories that we were telling. We left our house in LA and we moved out to a farm in upstate New York. And all of a sudden we're invested in the community and we you know, own a candy store with a bunch of our friends. And so the book is really about taking those big risks. You know, you're not gonna get big rewards in life unless you take big risks. And a lot of these kinds of movies we do are about that. It's like, take the plunge. Yeah. And even, like you said, when you f- did the first few Christmas movies, look at it now, it's explode. Like, Christmas is oh, yeah. the thing. The holiday movie. No, we're real arrogant about yeah. it. We're like, yeah. we, we made it cool. Yeah, we made Christmas cool, you guys. Just so you know. <laughs> and they're Merry only going to keep going. It's going to get cooler and cooler. We're going to keep doing them even when they're not cool. Yeah, even when everyone's moved on to something else, we'll still be doing Christmas <laughs> <Yep>. movies. <laughs> All right, well, let's go f- to some audience questions. Okay. Oh, cool. You guys are going to get involved? That's cool. Oh, so we have some here. Ooh. Who is the one who recorded the most scenes because it was wrong or if you were laughing? Oh, who gets laughing? Uh, oh. God, we joked around a lot. I feel like you and Megan probably yeah, had Megan's a hard time. Bad. Yeah, Megan's bad. Megan's naughty because she'll... Megan will say things... So coverage is like when it, they're filming me. And so on my coverage... Megan will be off camera saying some very off color things and it's very appreciated because it livens the whole thing up but y'all don't want to hear that side of the scene. (laughs) Dangerous. All right, now we have some audience questions. Here we go. (laughs) Hey! Twitter first. I should use the microphone. That's why it's in my hand. Um, I was wondering what your favorite Christmas songs are because we were just talking about um, one of our favorites which is Drunk on Christmas. Yay! Shout out Tyler Hill. Right answer. (laughs) Wow. Uh, no, I don't have to say that song. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I love uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is probably one of my favorite songs. Um, but I love that old kind of jazzy sounding Christmas stuff. I love that vibe. That's cool, though. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you like that. Yeah, man. Drunk on, can you sing us a little drunk on Christmas? Let's get a little bit drunk. It's time to party till the morning. Let's get a little bit drunk. It's fine on Christmas Eve. But oh, boom, boom, let's <laughs> get... <laughs> Great. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's why you have a gig, you know? <laughs> okay, one more. Who's next? Hi. Hi. Hey. Um, I know we were just talking about your book. Yeah. Um, I was Wait, wondering. Wait, your sweaters. Yeah, oh my god, are say? so cute. 
Oh, it says we dropped all adult responsibilities oh, to see Hillary Burton. That's Sorry. a cool shirt. <laughs> that's Yay. really cute. Yeah, all, it's all you guys. That's all right. awesome. Um, so I was just wondering if you were going to be doing a book tour. I am going to do a book tour. I was literally in the Savannah airport last night trying to do a conference call with, like, you know, gate change, you know, all those announcements. And uh, my, Harper One uh, is my publisher, and they're like, Let's just go big. So yeah, we're gonna have a nice big book tour, and um, I'm excited about putting that out into the world. You know, I was very lucky that when I was taking some risks in my life, there were great books that I could turn to. I really loved the Beekman Boys book, because um, it, it was the same story. It was like leaving the city, taking some risks, moving to a farm. Your relationships go through a huge transition. Like you're, you doubt yourself at times. And so I wanted to be able to do for other people what those books did for me. The Beekman Boys. Oh my God, Tyler. You, you, do you guys know what this is? <laughs> yes, the Beekman Boys. They uh -oh. bought a goat farm up where I live and they revitalized an entire town with Whoa. all like goat soaps, goat milk, <laughs> goat cheese. <laughs> and now they've got a whole, they're like in Target, baby. They're everywhere. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This wow. This is like, this is like Chip and Joanna Gaines, what oh, they did in Waco. Yeah. It's like Heroes. the same thing. Yeah. You know what this yeah. is? Or are you acting like you do? Do you no, know? No, yeah. Cool. Okay, God, I gotta get it. He's been on a that. tour bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, who are the okay, That sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, Tyler, you're going to move to a farm soon, right? And start I want to. Yeah. Um, Hillary keeps trying to get me to move to upstate. We've got a guest house. <laughs> That's all yours. Yeah, she's got like a beautiful witch house. Uh, <laughs> Hillary's house, when we lived in Wilmington, looked like something like a haunted house. Like she had s skulls and candles and like snakes in jars. So when they moved out to this farm, her husband's like, okay, we have the family house. And then that house way out on the back of the property, that can be your witch house. So she's got one house that's like full of just tinctures and her like witchy things. But that's where, where you're like, I will not be go. staying <laughs> in the witch house. I know if goes wrong in my but career, Hillary's going to let me stay in the witch house <laughs> for, with well, Megan. Ne next year, when you got to get method for a Christmas witch. Yeah. I'll be preparing for oh, it yeah. on and the I'm going to come, I'm gonna come for up to the farm and yeah. check in. And be like, yeah, oh, don't go down go. to that house. Tyler's preparing for Christmas. Oh, no, we're all in our Christmas cloaks. And our grog around the cauldron. We're too excited about this. But... For now, we have A Christmas Wish, yes. uh, which p plays on Thanksgiving night. Yes. yes. They let us premiere on Thanksgiving last year. And I was like, oh, how's this going to go? And it was so great because at the end of the day, like you've cooked, you've eaten, you've done the dishes. And it's so great to make something that families can sit around and watch together. And, you know, we joke about the pressure of like having to appeal not only to like mom or dad or grandma or the kids, you have to appeal to everyone. And so to make something that yeah, no everyone one wants to, them. not everybody wants to watch football. Okay, newsflash to like the uh -uh. one third of your family that does. Not everybody does. So take that into the garage with a little TV and you can watch <laughs> football in there. The rest of the family's watching a Christmas Into wish. the witch hut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got your TV, got mom, got grandma, got some hot cocoa. It's yes. really good. It's really good. I really like it. Take your dessert into the living room this year. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for being here so thank much. You. And yeah, watch A Christmas Wish on Thanksgiving night. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank See you, guys. You guys.